congregational song, page two, he touched me. Shackled by a heavy burden, need a load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me, and now I am no longer the same. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise him. I will shout it why eternity, eternity rose. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened to me, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us. Enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The Book of the Prophet Ezekiel. The Book of the Prophet Ezekiel. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also, thou son of man, Thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, An end, the end, is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, 
and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abominations shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, An evil, an only evil, behold, is come, an end is come. The end is come, it watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land, the time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountains. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee, and I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold, it is come. The morning is gone forth. The rod hath blossomed. Pride hath budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return. Neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet, even to make all ready. But none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of them mourning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, but they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. And I will give it into the hands of the strangers for a prey and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute it. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place, for the robbers shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients. The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 8 And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward fire, and from his loins even upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head, and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, 
where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold every form of creeping things and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jeazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence, and have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury, Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Chapter 9 He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have charge over the city to draw near, even every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the higher gate, which lieth toward the north and every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man among them was clothed with linen, with a writer's inkhorn by his side. And they went in and stood beside the brazen altar. And the glory of the God of Israel was gone up from the cherub, whereupon he was to the threshold of the house. And he called to the man clothed with linen, which had the writer's inkhorn by his side. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, Go ye after him through the city, and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children, and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. And he said unto them, Defile the house, and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth, and slew in the city. And it came to pass, while they were slaying them, and I was left, that I fell upon my face, and cried, and said, Ah, Lord God, wilt thou destroy all the residue of Israel in thy pouring out of thy fury upon Jerusalem? Then said he unto me, The iniquity of the house of Israel and Judah is exceeding great, and the land is full of blood, and the city full of perverseness. 
For they say, The Lord hath forsaken the earth, and the Lord seeth not. And as for me also, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, but I will recompense their way upon their head. And behold, the man clothed with linen, which had the inkhorn by his side, reported the matter, saying, I have done as thou hast commanded me. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name, we pray. When I said that I would follow, it was with an honest heart. But I did not fully understand the cost. Who show us what it really means to carry the cross. Choices 
There will never be a reason to lose this confidence For I have learned where my assurance lies And the truth of this conviction makes me shout to the sky. I believe, I believe, yes, I believe, I believe. So I shout to the sky. Yes, I believe, I believe. We Praise the Lord. You are ready. And heaven is ready for you. And all those requests of your heart, good, 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 in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight is a special night, a special night for you. That the God of wonders, the God of power, and the God of all possibilities is coming directly to you today. And the ever-present miracle-working Christ will be present with you there. It's about to work right now. In whose life? Father, we thank you at this time. Father, we glorify your name. Father, we honor your name. Father, we exalt your name. You are the God of power and the God of all possibilities. And we know that today you are going to touch every life. You are going to visit everyone. And you ever present with your power, you are going to deliver every oppressed person in Jesus' name. Tonight, wonders of salvation, wonders of healing, wonders of miracle, wonders of your personal touch and perfect transformation in every life in Jesus' name. We exalt you, we honor you, we magnify your name, 
I will pray you inhabit the praises of the heart of everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Marvelous, marvel, marvelous wonders you reveal and you manifest in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Wipe the tears away. Take the sorrow away. Take the suffering away. And Lord, we pray everyone will have a divine touch and testimony as well. Confirm it, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Another amen. God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we come to the presence of the Lord for our own great miracle explosion. And in your life, in your family, in your community, in your congregation, anywhere you find yourself tonight, that great miracle working power of the Lord will work unhindered, unrestrained in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, I bring the message from the Lord unto you. And the message is the ever present miracle working Christ. That same Christ. What he did before, he's still doing today. And he's ever present. Ever present anywhere we call upon his name. Ever present wherever there is any need. Wherever there is any suffering. And wherever there is a person that says, I want the salvation of the Lord. I want the redemption of the Lord. I want the transforming power of the Lord. Wherever there is anyone that is crying out and calling out to meet the needs of his life. Spiritual needs, physical needs, emotional needs, financial needs. Professional need, anywhere there's anyone that is calling upon the Lord and saying, Lord, I am here. He'll be present there with you. And as we mention the name of Jesus, and we connect to the power of the Lord, that power, that name, working wonders, will come upon your life tonight. Upon me tonight. Upon me tonight. The ever-present miracle walking Christ. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 2. And I'm reading from verses 3 and 4. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us, by them that heard him. Then in verse 4, he tells us, God also, bearing witness, both with signs and wonders and divers, different, various miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his will. According to his will. Miracles at the will of God, signs and wonders at the will of God, salvation, freedom, forgiveness, transformation of life. That's the will of God, and God bears witness. When we reveal Christ, God bears witness. When we lift up Christ, God bears witness. When we bring the sinner to confront or to come to the Savior, and we bring the sinner and the Savior together, God bears witness with signs, with wonders, and with diverse miracles, and with the gifts of the Holy Ghost, and everything it does, he'll do it in your life tonight. Everything he does, he'll work miracle in your life tonight. He does according to his own will. When Christ comes to your life and when God bears witness, what he does is every other will, the will of Satan, 
the will of man that is contrary to you. He crushes everything and the will of the almighty God comes to bear upon your life. And tonight is your night. I said tonight is my night. The night of miracle, the night of wonder, the night of salvation, the night of redemption, the night of deliverance, and the night when the mighty power of heaven will set every captive free. Every captive free. And the things that are about you kept you in captivity until this moment. All the chains, all the shackles, they are broken in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10 of that same chapter. In verse 10, it says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. He suffered already at the whipping post. He suffered for you. On the cross, he suffered for you. He cried out, my God, my God, why? As thou forsaken me, that was the moment of his suffering for you. And then it says that suffering is to bring many sons unto God. And tonight, he'll bring you to God. If you are seeking the Lord, he'll bring you to God. Even if you are saved already, he'll bring you deeper into God in Jesus' name. And all those desires of your heart that you want to be close to God, you want to have deep relationship with God, and you want all those things that have separated you from the inheritance of the Lord, everything to be taken away. Tonight is your night of manifestation. Bringing many sons out of shame to glory, out of sin to glory. Out of suffering uh, to glory. Out of captivity to glory. Out of imprisonment to glory. Out of degradation. Out of everything uh, that has held you down. It'll bring you out and it'll bring you to glory. I rejoice with you tonight. That tonight is that night and the day and the time the Lord has ordained. And the glory of God and the glory of heaven brought by Christ through the gospel will come to you tonight in Jesus' name. And he's going to make himself the captain of your salvation. The captain of my salvation. Where are you? The captain of my salvation. And you'll find tonight that he saves you find tonight, no matter the description of your sin, the darkness of your sin, the deprivation, degradation of your shame, it'll bring you out of there tonight, and it'll bring you to glory in Jesus' name. He did it before. Look at that blind man. He came, and the Lord opened his eyes, brought him out of darkness, and brought the glory of heavenly light. Look at that leper. The leper came and said, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me whole. He touched him and made him whole. He is touching you tonight. And he brought him out of that defilement of leprosy. And he brought him the glory of cleansing and the glory of a new body as well as a new life. Look at yourself, Phoenician woman. My daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. Brought her out of the body of the heart and brought her to glory. He'll bring you to glory tonight. And then look at Lazarus. Dead, fourth, second, fourth, third, and fourth day in the grave. And Christ came, and Martha said, Lord, if you had been here four days ago, my brother would not have died. But now he's dead, he's buried, and he's already stinking. 
And Jesus said, you will live again. And Jesus said to you tonight, you will live again. And then Jesus came there. Where did you bury him? And then he saw that. And Jesus said, take here away the stone. If you take away the stone of unbelief tonight, and the stone of all your peculiar things that you like, that God doesn't like, if you take away the stone tonight, the stone of contradiction, contradicting the Lord, the Lord is going to surprise you with a miracle tonight. And then, uh, eventually, he got there, and Martha said, Lord, you understand? He's thinking uh, already, all the stench, all the odor, all the evidence of that death will vanish away tonight in Jesus' name. And they took away the stone. He's still doing what he did before. And if we're going to experience what he did before, we have to also do what they did at that time. That they came to the Lord with expectation. And what they expected was manifested in their lives. And Jesus stood there and called his name. He's calling your name tonight. He knows where you are. He knows what you are suffering from. He knows the predicament. He knows the captivity. And he calls your name tonight. He said, Lazarus, what's your name? I said, what's your name? Shout out your name. Come forth. And he that was dead came forth. And then he said, Lose him. And let him go. You're free. You're delivered. Because he did that before. And he's still doing that today. He will do it in your life. That's why we're told in Hebrews chapter 13. Reading from verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ, the same. No change at all. In his love, no change. In his mercy, no change. In his power, no change. In his might, in his ability, there is no change. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. It's done. I said it's done. Tonight, as I've announced to you, the Lord is sending a message through this clay, through this vessel. And the message the Lord is sending is the ever-present miracle working in Christ. The three things as usual we're going to talk about. Number one, the unmerited mercy for penitent sinners. Don't ever come and say, Lord, I've done this, I've done this, I accomplished this, I planted this, I built this. Because of that, do this for me. The grace of God, the mercy of God, the miracle of God, the salvation of God is unmerited. The unmerited mercy for penitent sinners. Number two, the undeniable mustache. Mustache, that's something very small. The mustard seed, the seed of faith, the undeniable mustard, healing particular peculiar sicknesses. Praise the Lord, tonight you are healed. That little faith, that mustard seed of the faith in Christ, the faith in our Creator will touch your life tonight, turn everything around, healing, healing. Any, whatever the name of the sickness, healing comes to you tonight in Jesus' name. Number three is the unfailing miracle from the powerful Savior. A miracle that cannot fail. A miracle that will be very evident. A miracle you'll feel it in your body. You'll sense it in your life. Other people seeing you, they will see this is God. 
it will do it for you tonight. Number three, then, is the unfailing miracle from the powerful Savior. Number one now, the unmerited mercy for penitent sinners. Unmerited mercy for penitent sinners. It tells us in uh, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1, and you, as he quickened, you, as he made alive, you, as he brought to life, who are dead in trespasses and sins. The spiritual death, that separation from the living God. There is physical death, that separation from the living community. And there is eternal death that is separation from the glory of heaven and the God of heaven forever and ever. And as we come to Christ, as we say Christ will be my life. And Christ will be the giver of life to me in my spirit, in my soul, in my body. Death, spiritual. Death, premature death. Death, eternal counsel from your life in Jesus name and you come to Christ and then you will live your life to the full you will live your life complete life eternal comes from the Lord and you as he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins he tells us in verse 4 in verse 4 he tells us but God, who is rich in mercy, how do I get that life? How do I get that salvation? How do I get that eternal life, that spiritual life? How do I get the very life of Christ in my spirit, in my soul? By the mercy of God, that mercy is there today. That mercy will touch you there today. Because God is rich in mercy reach in mercy uh, underline that word reach if you are carrying a bible otherwise let me just explain to you when we say reach it means whatever they need the riches the wealth the finance they're able to carry everything what he's saying here is the poorest of sinners the dirtiest of sinners the most terrible of sinners, the most unthinkable of evil people. The salvation of God and the mercy of God is so rich, it will cover you. If somebody is, is as sinful as Saul of Tars of uh, Tarsus was, the grace of God, the love of God, the mercy of God will cover you. If somebody is as dirty as Zacchaeus, robbing this and robbing that. The moment you meet Christ, the grace of God and the mercy of God is so rich, that mercy will cover you. If somebody is as bad as Mary Magdalene, indwelled by evil spirits, seven of them, driving her here, driving her there, driving her everywhere, the moment you meet Christ, Christ will smile at you. And it will forgive all your sins and break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. If anyone is as terrible, as violent as the city of Nineveh, the Lord will have mercy on you. The mercy of God is so wide and is so deep that that mercy will cover everyone, every family, every community, as you come in Jesus' name, I rejoice with you. Mercy for you tonight. Love for you tonight. Grace for you tonight. Salvation for you tonight. Forgiveness for you tonight in Jesus' name. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Verse 5 then tells us even when we were dead in sins, even when we were dead in sins, 
I've met some people in this, uh, my brief life, of those who are asking for salvation. And then I say, can you get saved now? They said, no, no, I cannot get saved now. I said, why? They want to turn over a new leaf. They want to make their lives better. They want to change a lot of things. They want to help a lot of people. They want to do good here, do good here. And then they want to come back to God and say, God, I'm ready now. And God says, why do you think you are ready? Because I've stopped smoking. Because I try to get off the drunkenness. And because I'm not following this, following that anymore. And God says, you have not done enough. If you want to do it by yourself, you have not done enough. Go back and do it again. It is not by marriage. It is, what, it is not what you can do. It is what he has done. I need an amen. What Christ has done. Do you think that, you know, your holy water you are trying to pray and fast on is better than the blood of Jesus? Do you think that the do good, do good religion, I'm trying this, I'm trying that, do you think it's better than the suffering of Jesus? Do you think you're turning over a new leaf is higher, is greater, is more acceptable than the blood of the Lamb that was shed for you even when we were still dead in sin? He has quickened us together with Christ by grace, wonderful not by works by grace not by trial by grace not by crying by grace not by doing good by grace not by human goodness by grace are ye saved that's why your salvation is ready come and collect that salvation because it's ready and it's available for you. Look at verse 8. It says in verse 8, For by grace are you saved. For by grace are you saved. I've done this. For by grace are you saved. I paid so much money to a particular religious assembly. For by grace are you saved. And then I've, you know, shown did and done this and done that for people. For by grace are you saved through faith as you believe in the Lord. And say, yes, Lord, I know there is nothing I can do. There is nothing I ought to do. Christ has done everything for me. And I come on the basis of what Christ has done. Immediately, salvation will come to you. It says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. How much do we pay for a gift? Somebody there, how much do you pay for a gift? Nothing. If you have to pay, it is no more a gift. You pay with your tears, that's no more a gift. You pay with fasting, that's no more a gift. You pay by religious rituals and ceremonies, that's no more a gift. You pay with candle, and you pay with, you know, whatever you want to pay with, that's no more a gift. It says, it is the gift of God. The same kind of salvation that Peter received by grace, the same kind of salvation that Paul received by grace, that salvation is yours tonight. For it is the gift of God. It's mine. I said it's mine. What do I do? How do I come by that grace? What's the one solitary thing that God himself, the God of heaven, that he says, here is the way I want you to come. Here is the attitude I want you to bring so that the gracious salvation and the merciful Savior will come upon your life and things will become completely, totally different. Proverbs chapter 28, and we're reading from verse 13. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. 
you know, we human beings, unfortunately for us, we're like Adam. We're trying to cover the uncoverable, something that cannot be covered. We're trying uh, to cover. It's like what Isaiah said. He said, the wrapper is too narrow and is too short and cannot cover the man. It's like the ostrich putting the head in the sun and the rest of the body is outside and it thinks is covered. We are not wise by thinking we can cover anything from the Lord. The moment you come and you say, Lord, there is nothing to cover. You are light. In the darkness you see as if it was in the light. If I take my bed and put it in the depths of hell, you are still seeing me there. If I go up to the moon or to the sky, you can see anything. Lord, I don't want to be foolish to say I want to cover my sin. What have I said? You have not heard. What have I done? You have not seen. You have seen everything. There's no, there's no problem. Don't cover anything. Everything is written in the book of records, in the book of remembrance. I will not cover up the uncoverable. I will not cover. Are you there? I will not cover the uncoverable. It says, he that covereth his sins shall not prosper. What does that mean? He cannot make it. He cannot succeed in covering the uncoverable. The Lord has put a policeman inside you. It's called conscience. And that conscience is always telling the Lord who put him there, the man has done this, the woman has done this, and the conscience is always reporting back to God we cannot prosper in trying to cover our iniquity. But look at this. Whoso covereth, whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. That's how I had mercy. I came to the Lord. I said, Lord, look at me. At that time, all the people around me, they said I was the best religious person they had ever seen. Even the people didn't believe in God. They saw me and they said, your life is good. I said, no, sir, my life is not good. Only Christ can make your life good. Give me a good amen. And then I responded to the call of the gospel. I said, Lord, here am I. They say I'm good, I know I'm bad. They say I'm holy, I know I was sinful. And I said, Lord, I opened up everything. And that same moment, the salvation of God came to me. This same moment for you there, my brother, for you there, my sister, my son, my daughter there, the salvation of God is coming out to you tonight in Jesus' name. Whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have Mercy, unmerited mercy, unmerited salvation, as you come, nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to the cross, I clinch. Your salvation is ready. It will be handed over to you right now. Point number two now. Number two, the undeniable mustard. Healing particular, peculiar sicknesses. Mustard, a mustard seed. We're told in Matthew chapter 17, reading from verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Look at verse 20. And then Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. Stop right there for a moment. Why does not somebody get healed? Because the sickness is very serious. No, no. Because the sickness has been there for a long time. No, no. Because the sickness was initiated, originated, and kept there by Satan. No, no. 
because it is hereditary. It happened to the father, it happened to the mother, it happened to the grandfather, happened to the grandmother. No, no, not because of that. Why have we not got the healing? It says, because of your unbelief. We put healing on a feeling. And when we put it on feeling, it is not on faith. We think maybe something like electric shock will pass our body. That's some belief. We think we'll feel hot. We think we'll feel a kind of heat within. No, it is not by feeling. It is by faith. Actually, we have different senses in the physical the sense of sight, the sense of hearing, the sense of touch, the sense of feeling, and all the senses emotional that we feel in the body. And we think the, the, uh, the healing will come through those five senses. No, that's why the centurion came and left the servant at home and he wasn't even seeing the servant touching the servant feeling with the servant and he said lord my servant like whom seek of the palsy and vexed tormented and the lord said i will come and heal him that's what some people want they want the physical journey and the physical touch and the physical shaking, but it's not by senses. Only believe everything will be all right. Your body tonight, everything will be all right. Whatever may be the sign or the pain or the sickness in your body, everything going tonight in Jesus' name. Not by seeing, by faith. Not by feeling, uh, by faith. Not by, not by hearing, uh, by faith. Not by feeling the coolness of something, but by faith. And as you come by faith tonight, you are healed. I said you are healed. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, that's the mustard there, very small, very tiny. You cannot even feel its presence. That if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, remove henceforth to yonder place, and it shall remove. Cancer. Be removed to yonder place, and it shall remove. Blindness, be removed to yonder place, and it shall remove. And all those things crawling about in the body, remove to yonder place, and it shall remove. And nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you, unto me. It's done. Tonight, that little, small, minute, mustard seed of faith will roll everything out of your life in Jesus' name. Look at Luke chapter 17, verse 6. Luke chapter 17. And I'm reading from verse 6. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed. You see that? That's the Lord. That's what he said. He said, I don't need a big mountain of faith. I don't need... A big caterpillar face. All I need is that small 
mustard seed of faith. If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto this sycamore tree, Be thou plucked up by the root. Be thou plucked up by the root. You see, there are some sicknesses medical people will tell you when they are present in the body, they have roots and tentacles that go deep into the body, into the veins of the body. But then when you command by faith, mustard seed faith, and you say, come out, all the roots of that sickness, everything will be uprooted out of your body. Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. And it will obey you. And it must obey you. The night is my night. The Lord will touch your life. The Lord will heal your body. And everything that has been a problem, pain, pandemic in your life tonight, it is cancelled in Jesus' name. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, reading from verse 23. Mark chapter 9. Verse 23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, thou. Who is the person the Lord is talking to tonight? Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. If thou canst believe all things. How many things? Salvation is possible. Healing is possible. Deliverance is possible. Freedom is possible. That mental attack, everything will vanish away. And all the arthritis, everything will vanish away. And the weakness of the body, any part of the body, you are not able to stand straight. Everything will vanish away because if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. That's all we need. Just that mustard seed of faith and as we believe and we call upon the name of the Lord and we know the name of the Lord cannot fail that miracle will happen in your life in Jesus name Mark, in Mark chapter 11 reading from verse 20 Mark 11 reading from verse 20 and in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. If you've been in the farm before, like I was when I was very young, you want to kill a tree. If you cut it, the stem, and it falls down, it, it will appear it's still fresh. The leaves are fresh and all that, but as you dig the root, and you pull out the root, although it might appear strong, and thick and fresh by the following day you get there because the roots are uprooted everything will dry up when the lord comes against your infirmity and your sickness from the root is dealt with when you wake up the following morning lo and behold everything is gone i said everything is gone and everything you had written down on your paper as request, and it appears it's still green, it's still there, that's just camouflage. By the time you wake up tomorrow, lo and behold, you stand up, you can get up. You stretch your hand, you can stretch your hand. You want to walk around, you can walk around. You look at what you are not able to see before. Now you can see and your eyesight is bright in Jesus' name. And so when they notice that in the morning as they pass by and they saw that fig tree dried up 
from the roots in verse 21. In verse 21, and Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. Then in verse 22, Jesus said, Jesus answering saith unto them, have faith in God. There's no more problem, have faith in God. That sickness that is raging now will have to go out, will have to come down. Have faith in God. Those demons that are making uh, your body a kind of, uh, you know, their temple, do whatever they can, they want to do, running up and down, have faith in God, they'll be driven out. And the sword that has not been healed for so many years, have faith in God tonight, that sword will dry up. And the ulcer that will be suffering for so many years, have faith in God, that ulcer will be healed. And the cancer that they say you have to go through this and go through that before anything will happen, the name of Jesus tonight will make everything happen. Have faith in God. In verse 23, it says in verse 23, For verily I say unto you, Look at Christ telling you he never told a lie. He has never told a lie. He will never tell a lie. And he says, I'm telling you the truth, verily, truly, assuredly, I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Which mountain? The mountain in your life. The problem in your life. The incurable disease in your life. And that thing you've been praying and fasting about. And you've been wondering, how will I be free? Tonight, your freedom has come. Yeah. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, And shall not doubt in his heart. Shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. Those things which we pray shall come to pass. Those things which we mention shall come to pass. And the things we mention tonight in prayer shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. I will have whatsoever I say. I will have whatsoever I say. Say it for yourself now. If I say I am healed, I am healed. If I say I am delivered, I am delivered. If I say my yokes are broken, my yokes are broken. If I say demons will not have any power over my life anymore, Lo and behold, demons will not have any power over me anymore. If I say that salvation is there, you'll find that salvation there. He shall have. He shall have. He shall have whatsoever he says. As you open your mouth and you tell the Lord, and say, Lord, I know you provided everything for me. And I'm going to have everything Calvary has provided. I have everything now in Jesus' name. I have. I possess. I hold. I partake. It's mine. It's yours in Jesus' name. In verse 24, he tells us, Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe. And tonight, we know that God is going to work miracle in every life. Christ, the ever-present miracle worker, is going to do it, accomplish it in your life tonight, in Jesus' name. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. I will have them.
I will have them. Salvation is coming to you tonight. You'll have salvation in Jesus' name. Your freedom, your forgiveness, your redemption is coming to you tonight. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. Number one is your merited mercy for penitent sinners. Number two is the undeniable mustard healing, particular, peculiar weak sicknesses. Number three now, the unfailing miracle. Your miracle will not fail. Your miracle will not delay. The unfailing miracle from the powerful Savior. Let's come to Acts chapter 10 and we're reading from verse 38 acts chapter 10 verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth and that anointing has not faded away is still there that anointing has not passed away is still there that anointing is not weakened it is still there how God anointed Jesus, God, the God who changes not. The one who says, I am God, I change not. Anointed Jesus, that's the Jesus, the same yesterday and today and forever. Think about that. God unchanging, Christ unchanging, and the anointing unchanging. How God, the unchangeable God, anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the unchanging, unshakable Christ, was the Holy Ghost, the Father God, the Son Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the third person in the Trinity, with power, who went about doing good, went about doing good in your life tonight, going about doing good, by your seat over there tonight, going about and doing good. In your house there tonight, God going about and doing good. Amen. Yeah. On the first day of this crusade, the great miracle explosion crusade. Somebody shout, miracle explosion. In Ogo State, in one of the cities there, his sister was not able to go to the meeting because of a personal peculiar problem. And so she stayed at home. And she invited another sister, aged 87 years of age. And they searched the radio for her to listen in the Yoruba local language. In the other room, that sister with her children, they were watching the English version on video. And when I go to point three on the first day, the elderly sister rose up to go to the, to to the restroom. And uh, so as to ease herself. Remember, very old, age 87. And then as she was coming back, she had finished in the restroom uh, and then came back. As she got back, remember she was alone listening to the radio. She slumped and died. And the sister that invited her was in the other room. They were enjoying uh, the message. And when I gave the altar call, they couldn't hear any sound from her side. And so they came to her side where she was. They found her on the ground. And then they called her name, no answer. They looked at her very closely. She was not breathing. They pushed her. There was no response. Then they began to shout. And as they began to shout, neighbors gathered. They called the children where they were, nearby. And those children came. And they called mama, their own mother, 
Mama would not answer. They pushed her, they took her hand, they did everything. There was no evidence of life, no breath, no pulse, nothing. She was gone. And then we finished over here, we finished the altar call. And uh, we said, now we're going to pray. And the minister, our moderator, called me. And as I came to the pulpit here, and I announced that Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And then I said, we're going to pray now. And we began to pray before the final amen. That woman rose up. God is still working and in your life it will work in jesus name and as she woke up she saw a crowd and she saw her children ah uh, children why are you here all this cried a uh, crowd why were you why are you here and they said mama you are gone you are dying he said i only found myself in a particular place many many people there they were all sitting down i was only there i was the only one standing up and eventually as she came back to life they said she started speaking in tongues she couldn't talk yoruba language or english language just speaking in tongues and then after some time after speaking in tongues, speaking in tongues then she called jesus there was joy in that place in this same crusade it has happened there it will happen to you how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good over there doing good over there doing good over there and healing all and healing all and healing all you are there and healing all you are part of this and healing all you are getting it and healing all you have got it all that oppress of the devil for god was with him congratulations blessings for you congratulations salvation for you congratulations deliverance for you total redemption for you tonight in jesus name it's bowed and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed salvation is yours for the taking tonight the moment you say yes lord i am here i need forgiveness i want freedom i want salvation that salvation is yours for the asking it's bowed and eyes closed there's no wasting of time tonight because your salvation is available and it's ready and if you want that salvation now and that forgiveness now just raise up your hand and say lord i'm here your salvation is my christ died for me to take away all my sin lord i am here if you are not sure of salvation you'll be sure tonight if you have been wondering am i saved am i not saved just raise up your hand if you have been wondering i still feel the pressure of sin and the power of sin in my life your salvation is there now god is about to write your name in the book of life raise up that hand god bless you there god bless you there salvation is coming to you tonight as you are raising up your hand just stand up and get that salvation stand up on your feet where are you where are you where are you stand up god bless you there god bless you there tonight that salvation will not fail to get to you salvation 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 in your soul in your spirit the lord is setting you free tonight and the lord is giving you that forgiveness that freedom and that salvation just rise up wherever you are don't uh, dilly dally with Satan. Don't argue with Satan. You don't want to spend another night in sin, another night in guilt, another night in condemnation. Just say, Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. Yes, Lord, I come. I give myself. I hand over myself. I surrender completely without any reservation. I surrender to the Lord right now. Just stand up with your hand raised. Say, Lord, I thank you. 
I thank you that Jesus died for me. I recognize myself a sinner. I feel the guilt. I feel the condemnation. But Lord, I come to you because you died for me to bring me out of sin, out of shame, out of evil habits, and to bring me as a son, as a daughter, to glory and to grace. I accept, I receive your mercy, your forgiveness, your salvation at this time. It's not by marriage. I know it's by your mercy. I have it now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am saved. Thank you, Lord. I am forgiven. Thank you, Lord. All my sins, as many as they might have been, all my sins are taken away. Salvation has come to me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Keep on standing and praying for you now, Father. We thank you in Jesus' name that Christ, the only begotten Son, went to the cross and he died for everyone. And these have raised up their hands as a sign of surrender unto you. And they have stood up unashamedly that they want your salvation and they claim your salvation right now. Let the reality of their salvation done on them right now that they be saved in Jesus name forgive all their sins set them free from all their sins and let that same salvation that Christ provided for them on the cross of Calvary be theirs right now confirm the salvation and let the joy and the victory and the triumph of salvation that there's everyone right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord has done it. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there. They'll give you the slips to fill. Fill that correctly and hand, then hand over back to them. Heaven rejoices and we rejoice with you. That now you are saved. I call on our moderator tonight to please take over. Counselors are with you there. Congratulations. Welcome to the family of God. And if you give your life to Christ tonight, just look around you. Look at this large multitude. They are your brothers and your sisters. See the family you belong to now. Very many. And if you have been listening carefully to the international choir, you see people singing from all over the world. That means that if you go to America, your brothers are there. You go to India, your brothers are there. You go to Pakistan, your sisters are there. All over the world. Welcome to this great family. That's why you must give us the correct information. You write your name in capital letters. Don't use small letter. And then your phone number. Write it correctly, 11 digits. And uh, if there's a name they call you in your, where you live, write it down. Maybe uh, Papa John, write it down. And uh, if you are watching online, and you just gave your life to Christ, look at the crowd here, your brothers and sisters are all here. And uh, all you need to do is, you visit the link, showing on the screen and then you fill the form so that we can assist you further in your own new work with the lord and if you are listening via radio and you just gave your life to christ send us your name your phone number your email address by sms or you can send it through whatsapp now listen carefully this is the number plus two three four that's the nigerian code nine one five four 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 nine two six three 
Again, send your name, your phone number, your email address to, by, through SMS or WhatsApp to this number, plus 234-915-4242. Four nine two six three. Do that now. And welcome to this great family. Our ushers, our, our counselors are by your side. Don't be omitted. Make sure that you give them your name. Give them your address. Give them your phone number. Write everything in capital letters. When you have finished completing the form, give the forms back to the ushers. Let's do that very quickly. And if you have just given your life to Christ, there is a Converse Rally. For those who are here now, there's a banquet tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. This banquet is going to hold at the Deeper Life High School to my right there. Make sure you are there. Join others and the Lord will bless you mightily. But then if you are a, an online you know, uh, convert, there's also a special banquet. If you are watching online now, you gave your life to Christ on Sunday, there is going to be a rally. That rally is holding at, uh, at uh, you know, a, a time that will be, will be communicated to you. Sunday, 2nd of January, there's a special banquet. All the details will be sent to you as we send all the informations required of you. Those who are here, don't forget tomorrow, 2 o'clock, you are going to meet at the Deeper Life High School on this ground. And in all our states and in all nations, our leaders, our overseers, our pastors will be telling you where you are going to have your banquet. For Lagos, 2nd of, of, this, of January 2022. 2nd of January 2022. Please make sure you are there as we welcome you to this great, great family of God. Counselors, please let's hurry up because our list is long. I want to tick everything good tonight. Hurry up, hurry up. We are waiting. Miracle time is here. It's coming now. And uh, if you are sitting and you are just uh, waiting for the prayer time. If I were you, I would start praying now. I would start praying now. I would start telling God now, Lord, I am here tonight. You cannot leave me this way. The man of God has given us the word of God. And uh, he has given us the assurance that tonight is my night. If you are watching online, whether you are in Canada or you are in America or in any country in Europe or in any of the African nations, this is the time to begin to pray now. You are crying unto God and say, oh God, tonight is my night. That as the man of God comes up, oh, you will not pass me by. Are you praying, brother? Oh, you are just looking at this one, writing this. You know, the brethren that give their lives to Christ, they have gotten the number one miracle. And they are expecting number two, number three, number four, number five, number six. And they are expecting all the other miracles that will be added unto them. Why don't you talk to God now? I begin to pray and tell the Lord, look, I am here now. The one is gone. The two is gone. The three is gone. The four is today. And today is my day. Counselors, where are you? How far? All the supervisors, just let me know if you are finished. To my left hand side, wave your hand. Let me see you. If all is well, now you have taken all the names, where are you? Just wave your hand. To my left, where are you? Wave your hand at me. Let me see. And then in front of me, right in front of me, I see you there. And then to my right, where are you? I see you there. Anyone, if you are online, Join us now. Join us now. If you're on radio, 
You're on television. I've given you the number. Complete that form. Send it to us now. The email address is there on the screen. Send the SMS now. WhatsApp number now. Nobody will be left out tonight. I know online, brethren, you know our Father and the Lord have you as, a, as special. You are very special to him. He wants to hear your testimony. The miracle is not only for those who are Those online, our daddy is very particular about you. I am telling you tonight, you will see something you have never seen before. The miracle you have been expecting all these years will happen. Lazarus was dead. He came back again to life. 87-year-old woman was dead. She came again to life. What is your problem tonight that God cannot solve? Why don't you pray now and say, oh God, look at me. I am here this night. I am here this night. Oh Lord, look at number one problem. Lord, look at number two problem. Lord, look at number three problem. Begin to pray now. I begin to tell the Lord. When the man of God comes up, it's just to cement everything to summarize. That's what's happening tonight. Now let's welcome our Father and the Lord who is coming. Come on now, stand on your feet. The miracle time has come. Miracle time has come. Miracle time has come. Power time has come. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Our minister said, as loud as your hallelujah is, so will your miracle be. Your time has come. And the power of God is coming to you right now. Yeah. Remember, remember, is the ever-present miracle walking Christ. How God, the unchanging God, how God, the eternal God, how God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, anointed Jesus, Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever, doing good, healing the sick, delivering the oppressed, how he has been anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. He went about doing good. He's going about right now. He's coming to your side right there. And the power will touch you. And his glory will touch you. And the healing will touch you. And the deliverance will touch you. And the anointing that breaks every yoke will break all the yokes in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Healing all. Healing all. Are you part of that? Healing all. I said, are you part of that? Instantaneous miracle. Undeniable miracle. Unlimited miracle. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. Think about that. God with him. And he with us, the power is present now. So raise up your hand wherever you are. And wherever you have the problem, you have the challenge, lay hands in that place, blind eyes will open. Them legs will walk. That shorter leg will grow out. The tumor will vanish away. Miracles everywhere tonight. Here, there, online, social media, everywhere. Whatever you ask, everything is done. It's time now for you. Father, in Jesus' name, we exalt you tonight. We glorify you tonight. We magnify your name tonight. And we believe. We pin our faith on what you did on the cross of Calvary. We know you cannot fail. You will not fail. Everyone here, let there be a divine touch in every life in Jesus' name. Anywhere the problem is in the head. In their mind, in their heart, in their kidney, in their lungs, in their livers, 
in their blood system, in their joints, in their bones. Lord, I pray, touch them, transform them, heal them in Jesus' name. Whatever the name of the sickness, whatever the name of the disease or infirmity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. That mountain, move out. That tree of disease be uprooted in Jesus' name. The spirit of death, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, let there be a confirmation right now. Healing everywhere. Deliverance everywhere. Yokes broken everywhere. Lord, miracle everywhere now. Left, right, center, back, everywhere. Here, there, online, everywhere. Manifestation for everyone right now. I thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. It is done. Confirmation, Lord, in every life. In Jesus' name, I pray.